Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will, quenching my thirst. <laughs> welcome, guys, back to It Resolves. Thanks for tuning in, listening, watching, how you're doing it, whatever. <laughs> Will's not on top of things today. I'm, I'm really not. That out. Guys, if this I'm- is a lackluster episode, it's on him. That's fair. It is. This is my turn to come up with stuff, and all I've got is this crappy intro. <laughs> oh, I've got this bad it. Oh, uh, that was a meme and that just died in my brain. Whew. Guys, we're on places. <laughs> we are we are found places. YouTube, the podcast app, SoundCloud. Thank you uh, for saving it, uh, Chance the Rapper. Appreciate that. Did you hear about that? No. Oh, really? He no. bought. He like. I don't know if he bought SoundCloud or if he just gave them a bunch of money, but SoundCloud was going under and he was like, nope. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, dude, he's great. He's the man. I actually don't know anything about Chance the Rapper. We have to stop this episode immediately (laughs) and educate you. All right, cool. Guys, other than that, our social media accounts, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Please follow us on Instagram. That's where you get all of our juicy tidbits. Yes. Uh... Yeah, that's it. That's all I want to say. Twitch. Patreon. <laughs> He's Woo! doing great today, guys. It's It's been a long day, and I'm sorry. But we're here. We're here to make it better. We're yes. here to resolve an episode, sir. <laughs> a result, resolve of a Friday episode, our newly found Friday the, episodes. The new filler fun day. Yeah, the new filler fun day. Uh, today, we, we've got we a cool did. topic to you, for you. I'm also off my game. Uh, that we just like to talk about. We it think it's out. a cool topic. It's it's very it's a it's a little nugget just at the end of the nugget. week. Yeah, we've got some work to do heading in towards the weekend, so it's just a little something something. Just to give to you, tide some, you over some stuff to hold you over until Monday when we have our deck tech episode day. Yes, uh, and that's gonna it's gonna be a big week. I think uh, aside from the deck techs, yeah, there's two things we've not done before that are popping off. Yeah, maybe we right. talk about one of those and. In this episode, maybe perhaps, towards the end, perhaps. if you can hang in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I might have scared you all away. <laughs> hopefully, but, not. hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully uh, not. But we do always traditionally start off our filler days uh, with a Kiki Weekly instead of our random card of the day. You told me it was uh, special this time. Yeah, it's a standard combo, uh, not an what? infinite combo. That should be noted. I hope there's not another one. Yeah, I hope there's not another one. But, Even if it's something dumb, like well, I can't think of any bad infinite combos. Yes, I can. Infinitely, like, putting a minus one, minus one counter on something and a plus one, plus one counter on it at the <laughs> same time. Just to negate time. each other? Yes, nothing That happens. would be bad. <laughs> Although, that could work with cards like, say, whenever you put a minus one, minus one. Yeah, so that, draw a card. That still wouldn't be bad. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so, for this one. Right. First card in the combo. Okay. Metallic Mimic. This is from Aether Revolt. This is actually two Aether Revolt cards. All okay. Right. Metallic Mimic is a 2-1 for 2 artifact creature. I'm very familiar. Uh, it basically comes in, and you get to name a creature type. And any time a creature comes in of that type, it gets a plus 1, plus 1 counter. Oh, yes. Uh, right now, it's used in a lot of aggro strategies, things like that, because it gets to boost everything. A lot of tribal. Yeah, tribal exactly. Things. It's really good with tribal decks, things like that. Mm-hmm. So, you play that. You name Servo. Okay. Got a name Servo. Interesting. Yeah. The second card, second piece to this puzzle, is a very cool card called Animation Module. For one one colorless, it is an artifact. All right. Uh, basically, what it says is anytime you place a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature, you get to pay one and create a servo. See the combo? I see the line. You see the line? Do you see the line? Um, there's also a side of, or a, a little bonus effect with this. You can tap okay. some mana and tap the, the animation module to put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature, which means you get to actually start so the combo off say, no matter what order you play these in, which I is like really, that. really nice. And you can start it off on a turn that you don't play either of them. Exactly. Uh, nice. So it is really, really cool. So this I is like actually it. a relatively cheap combo. Again, animation module is only one to cast. Uh, Metallic Mimic is only two. Uh, mm-hmm. Granted, you do need mana to actually build up the servo army, so to speak. Sure. But you know, on turn three, if you have both of these out, hopefully you have three mana and you're able to do it a few times, Fair. right? Mm-hmm. I, that's that's actually the possibility here. And so you can actually, uh, not infinitely, but you can make this sort of army of servos. I like it. Uh, it's actually a really cool combo. And I, I actually like just found lot. it on a MTG Goldfish forum, I believe. 
Uh, but it was really, really cool. I like it because it's in standard. So this mm. is actually a build around combo that people can use right now if you are playing standard. Uh, I'm not, but you might be. And if <laughs> yes, you are, he is, sort no, of. I'm not. <laughs> you got, you've got some decks. Uh, I might have taken them apart, but anyway, um, we. I really like this combo. I think it's cool. I'd like to build around it. This makes me kind of want to <laughs> to do standard. That's does not it? true. No, not it, even it, that Frank cool Sanity combo. deck, man. The Frank Sanity deck does. Uh, that deck is cool. I can't handle this, man. I love that deck. Let's just mill everything. Yeah. Mill's my favorite. If I you've know. watched our early episodes, you know that. I know. So yeah. That's that's my combo, Kiki like, Weekly. I like the, the combo. Don't like your negativity, Kev. That's okay. I don't like that you're off of your game today, but it happens. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> All right. What are we talking about today, Will? Kev, we're talking about mind games and magic. Mm. We're talking about some little subtleties you can do to throw your opponent off their game, <clears throat> off their rocker. Yeah. Sort of get an edge when you don't have one. Play <laughs> a mini game. <laughs> and that's all I have. Um, that's good. Yeah, it's there. There are some subtleties you can do when yes. you're playing the game of Magic that, if you're a new player, you might not have picked up on. Mm-hmm. If you're an old player, but maybe not the best, uh, <laughs> you might not know that these are being done to you. Yeah, you can play around them. Which it's worth saying if somebody is trying to mind games you mm-hmm. and you don't realize you're being mind games, to, yeah, then- it works then it's not really working right like the mind game doesn't do what the mind game is supposed to do usually well usually usually there are some that will that you really have to pause <laughs> and take pause and think about what's happening so let's let's talk i'm gonna talk more about like modern mind game things specific to modern sure. because it's easier for me just because i like modern i know it better yeah. um but it's also really easy because mind games come up so often i think in modern more so than like standard right now um not always, but I think right now there's people know the modern format, and so when you go to play like a competitive environment, uh, I'm a, I mean I'm gonna flag a I'm gonna flag that play. So when if you're playing modern and somebody leaves up four mana, three of which is blue, I mean cryptic like that's command, clearly two mana, one of which is blue. Two man, well, okay, that can be any any sort mana of mana leak, remand, yeah, any like of those, any number of counter spells. Um, but one red mana, that's bold. One black mana, fatal bush. Yeah, I guess you would say one mana yeah. of any color. I don't actually know. Dismember. Oh duh. Like there are yeah. tons of options, is what I like about modern, and so you have to. I be, see what you're saying. Yeah, I think in standard. There are definitely some notable cards, things like, I believe it's called Supreme Will, two and a blue. Uh, you get to choose one, either Impulse or Mana Leak, basically, yeah, uh, right. which is really, really good. Uh, things like that you have to be aware of, certainly. Um, I, don't and I, think think there's, I don't think there's enough of a difference. I think there are more fun. options. I think you need to know the deck. Like, I'm not worried about a sensor <laughs> in... I'm not worried about Counterspell if I'm playing against a Black Green Energy deck. No, of course not. Right. You're worried about Fatal Push. Exactly. Yeah, that's fair. So there's, no, there's not a multitude of these different options. Yeah. But if you want to take a modern approach, all right, there's also Vintage, where <laughs> you can just throw cards on the table for free and things Here's happen. Here's a Force of Will. Yeah, and you do have exactly. to play around that. So, But it's not always easy. So let's gloss over all this. I will not gloss over This wasn't over meant to be an argument. I'll make anything. I know you will. Especially when you're wrong. What were you going to say? What I was going to say was, when you are playing, no matter what format, you have to be aware of the cards that are in the format that are at instant speed and that you need to keep in mind. So if somebody's holding up mana or holding up cards in hand, things like that, you just need to be aware of the potential that they could have a response to anything that you do. Absolutely. And Um, this kind of goes back to a point I think I made on a previous episode. Know mm -hmm. how you can lose. Yes. Right, and play around that. Um, and we'll kind of get into some different specifics yeah. to mind games, but if there's a certain card in a deck and you know it's in there, <laughs> uh, watch out for it. Yeah, That's exactly. And to the person playing those spells that you get to interrupt your opponent with, mm-hmm. you should pretend like you have them even if you don't all, have them. All the freaking time, yes. <laughs> if you can help it. If you're a control deck on turn two, and you have a blue and anything open. You're now representing a million counter spells. Yes. Doesn't matter if you've got them. 
Yeah, you pretend like you do. So if somebody uh-huh. plays a spell, your opponent plays a spell, you've got two mana open, one of which is blue, and you are a control deck. Okay, if you don't have the counter spell, don't just immediately immediately say, yeah, you got it, no problem. Pretend like you've got it. Pretend yes. like you're consider- it's considering the counter, and then say, no, you know what, I'm going to, you get you get this one. And that is literally looking at, I play, uh, I don't know, what, whatever it would be, uh, Thragdos for whatever reason. Let's just go with it. Sure. On turn two. I know, but <laughs> as, as the thing that, as the first card that came to mind. Mm-hmm. So, Thragdos? Wait for it. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Done. And you, here's the deal. What you really want to get your opponent to do is that every time they cast a spell, you want them to, like, say, Thrag Tusk? You want it to be a question. Put them that, make them put that question mark Yeah, right be like, uh, do I Thrag Tusk you? No. Uh, do I Bolt you? No? no? Uh, maybe? Well, maybe? I'm not, I'm you don't I... know. Like, right. that you want them to question all of their plays, because you can really yes. honestly steal a game that way. Like yep, there will... are absolutely times where you can steal a game and just through the mind games thing because they're going to start playing around stuff. That's the thing. If they are a less <clears throat> experienced player, someone who's not very versed in a competitive format, uh, someone who hasn't listened to our aggro principles episode, yeah. uh, they will not always just try to goldfish their way to their yeah. thing. Yeah. They're going to respect your mana leaks, your re- whatever it Which, is. Which to some level they should. And this is where my counterpoint comes in where if you aren't the controlling deck, you need to start baiting. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is sort of a mind games thing in its own from a different perspective where you're not leaving up mana for things or anything like that, but you want to bait the counters out. So for instance, if you've got a bomb spell, right? Like the spell that's going to win you the game and you're worried about them having a counter, maybe Mm -hmm. move to a different spell that forwards your game plan but doesn't necessarily get you the win that way you play it if it's good enough mm-hmm. they're going to counter it if they can if they can't counter it they'll let you have it and then you yep. now know okay they probably don't have a counter this time an example you know I mean? would be in modern in death shadow yeah um you can pay play gromag angler usually for one later in the <laughs> yeah. game so honestly very quickly like turn yeah. three you can easily do it <laughs> so if you can play gromag angler super cheap mm-hmm. but you're holding death shadow which is the namesake card of the deck is yeah. going to be bigger than Gromag probably most likely play Gromag first yeah because it represents a big enough threat that they've they if they have the counter it. they have to counter it right I, like, yeah I don't think that's a free card you just let go no Th- unless they've got some way to remove it now they sure. could also be holding God I don't know um some form of removal dismember I guess would dismember get Gromag, would hit right it. yeah um and they might still then counter the mm-hmm. the uh, death shadow but again make them have the counters yeah make them have the answer you you want to respect the counters and you want to make sure that you're not just running into them Mm -hmm. however you do want to still forward your game plan and not just play around everything because it's not going to work like at some point you just have to say okay they have it let me use it up like let's let's get there let's hope it doesn't happen um and so that's just a really important part of it and to that point whether you're a control deck or a burn deck or any sort of instant speed removal or anything like that, um, especially if it's later in the game and you've got a bunch of lands out, hold your lands. Those now yeah. become potential threats to your opponent, mm-hmm. right? Like if you don't need more lands, say your deck curves out at four, something like that, mm-hmm. and you've got maybe six lands out, maybe it's gone sort of late and modern or something like that, and you got six lands out, you really don't need too many more, and you draw nothing but a land, right? Like you've got one land in hand, don't just immediately play it. Consider holding it yeah. back, right? Like, if it's relevant to do that, that means you now represent a card that they have to worry about. They have to make sure that they respect that fact. Right. Right. Like, Precisely. Uh, <laughs> the term cards in hand doesn't mean tell me your hand. It means <laughs> how many things should I be worried about? Exactly. Uh, and that that's a, a common phrase that also, if you are not asking, ask that. <laughs> cards in hand, open mana. It's, I especially like that if you have... A, a handful of lands <laughs> because that then means i'm trying to play something mm-hmm. what you got bud yeah and if it's nothing say cards in hand three <laughs> okay attacks yeah just don't don't play your thing yeah, and yeah. Just be, be curious get them thinking that you are always more ahead than you are and asking questions is a good point you want to mm-hmm. know what they have you want to ask and 
keep that open like say how many cards do you have in hand keep yeah. that open that way you do know okay i have to either consider what they have in hand or now they have to consider what i've got and that's a really good point um i also want to talk about sideboarding um oh, yeah so there's a thing that i think a lot of people fall victim to this uh, with sideboarding they're if they're up against a deck and they don't have any sideboard tech for that deck they tend to just skip sideboarding they're like ah oh, well i don't really have anything so i'm just gonna replay that isn't a good idea no. <laughs> you should pretend like you have stuff oh, right yeah. like especially in like a really competitive format you want to make them think that you've done something to make your deck better because then they're going to have to start sideboarding for those changes so for instance if they're a dredge deck right yeah uh and you technically don't have any graveyard hate in your sideboard but you have to represent that you do so you start sideboarding some cards put cards in and then take those same cards out but you know just pretend lsv did that yeah and it no, was you do that my like favorite thing you have to do that but you know you do you sideboard technically they think you're sideboarding basically and now all of a sudden they have to think okay maybe they sided in graph digger's cage maybe right. they sided in rest in peace maybe i should put some artifact or enchantment hate in there when that actually doesn't hit anything in your deck because you don't right. have anything and now right? they've got five to six dead cards in their deck yes which again that outright isn't gonna win you mm -mm. any match um but it is a it is a subtle advantage that can turn the tide well what it amounts to is if they draw a dead card you're up a card at that point because mm -hmm. that card now does absolutely nothing right <laughs> like, that's right. that's a really important thing i think and mm -hmm. card advantage wins games that does not necessarily you know the yes dead no stuff. that's true card advantage does win games yeah, yeah. a supreme verdict doesn't do anything against <laughs> or something so no, not yeah. at all um i also want to talk uh very quickly about when you do sideboard um basically pretend like you're doing uh nah, i'm gonna skip that actually just kidding sorry my point was there but it, it wasn't that's it wasn't fine that's just all right just kidding I'll, Psych. i think what he was trying to say was you take the cards out put a new no in. no i had another thing but it wasn't it was more of a different topic it wasn't necessarily mind games. oh that we're saving so, yeah we're saving gotcha yeah that's another topic yeah, for another, another topic day. for another day <laughs> anywho um yeah there there are plenty of subtle advantages you can you can take in magic yeah uh mind games is one of them of course mm -hmm. playing with your opponent's psyche <sighs> yeah that's all i really want to say yeah i think i touched on the points i wanted to the big one for me was sideboarding because you want to play mind games with sideboarding um, oh yeah I, I think that's hugely important and undervalued uh, for a lot of players. That's true. But that's yeah. just personal opinion. Do what you want, but always pretend to sideboard if you don't actually sideboard. <laughs> sure. And this is a, probably more for the higher echelon of uh, play. If you go to a some event, um, you don't really need to do it at an FNM. Well, no. Like, if you're at an <laughs> like, FNM and you, like, I mean, it's an FNM. Like, yeah. you're, you're there more to have fun. Uh, if you're at an yeah. FNM to be competitive... You should really be like a GP, <laughs> like maybe you know, just yeah, it, sort it's of. like yeah, sort GPs of. are more competitive because it's a GP. <laughs> FNM is more about just having fun, meeting new people, and yeah. the local community sort of an aspect of it. And I don't know, that's why I kind of like FNM. It's but. I I play kind of almost the same way mm -hmm. as if I was competitively. Yeah, I I have the same kind of demeanor or try to keep it anyway. Mm -hmm. Except at an FNM, I'm always eating. So <laughs> I'll usually play some kind of con control thing. Yeah. Um, and I'll just be like, just looking at the, looking at the board. <laughs> They're playing the things. So Taki comes out of nowhere. <laughs> no, you got it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a noise. I, we go to the Chinese food place all the time in the mall. Yeah, yeah. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> on, my, uh, on my low main. <laughs> Yeah, you got it. <laughs> That's I, so gross. I'm obnoxious. You are obnoxious. But it's because <laughs> I don't care. Well, it's FNM. Like it's, you're meant yeah. to just have fun and hang out. Like it's. Yeah. I mean, you want to be. You want to win. I'm sure. I mean, yeah. You who doesn't there, want free packs? Yeah. I mean, of course. But like, at the end of the day, if you just got demolished, but you got to meet some cool people and hang out with them, and maybe yeah. 
find some things that you could improve your deck with that's kind of the point right like i think so i think that's more of the point of an f and m more than i mean a gp you want to win but oh absolutely 100 percent. or, or <laughs> yeah or grinders i guess are kind of different than yeah any yeah. of those grinders are whew, brutal yeah after playing a pre-release i can see how grinders are going to be a nightmare yeah i think so whenever we go and grind <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about with mind games? Is it not that kind of grinding? I thought it was. I th- I think it is. I just didn't want to do it right now. Oh, got it. Later. <laughs> Stop no. grinding on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys. Um, again, this was a this is a nugget. A little nugget. Oh, this is gonna be a shorter episode because we're not on top of our game we're today. Really not. So sorry about that. Um, but okay, so we do have some community things to talk about though, and that's what I was distracted with. So I want to get into that if you don't mind, sir. Okay. Kev, we had a question. Yeah. We asked the masses. We did. What was that question, buddy? The question of the week this week. Uh, again, we post these every Monday. What is the best token generator? Token generator. Now, this could include a lot of things. Things oh, yeah. like planeswalkers create tokens. Sorceries instance create mm-hmm. tokens. Uh, also, creatures create tokens. So, there's a lot of things. Uh, enchantments do the same. The one that was posted with the the actual question was Bitter Blossom. One of the most Prolific. renowned yeah, yes. uh, uh, token generators. Uh, however, it did not win. Really? Um, it did hmm. not. It did come in third. I have... Okay. I have, of course, my guesses. Bitter Blossom would have been my number one. Yeah. My other guess is Young Pyro. Young P. Why P? Not even on the list. Did he get any votes? Nope. Y'all. Yeah, right? <laughs> how many of y'all play Magic? <laughs> um, how many of you are here for my sweet face? <laughs> how many of you are here to play Magic? <laughs> yeah, I was a little surprised. Young Pyro was not on the list. Uh, Young Peasy. Young Peasy. Lil P. Lil P. <laughs> really? Okay, yeah. that's, fine. that's uh, fine. I will say, again, Bitter Blossom came in third with four votes. Okay. Uh, so that's our starting point. What okay. do you think came in second? In second? Mm-hmm. Mm, can you give me a block? Uh, if I give you a block, it'll give it away. So give me a block. Like, 100%, it'll give it away. Is it Master of Waves? No. As I'll a, say as this, a weird guess. it's in standard right now. Uh, maybe it won't. Hang I on. can't give you the block because that would just be way it's too in obvious. standard right now? It is in standard right now. Is it, um, oh, what's that card that, um, psh, 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 creates tokens whenever you cast things? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I love this. I love knowing the results before you do. This is fun. It's, what, okay, what is it? What is it? What is the it? The Locust God. Right? Guys, it's not even been played yet. <laughs> <laughs> With a total of six votes, the Locust God came in second. I love the Locust God. I like God. the Locust God. I didn't think it would be in the top three at all. It's not been played yet. Um, we don't know if it's going to touch standard. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if you guys are correct. Probably not. Um... <laughs> All right. Maybe, though. I mean, heck. I it, mean, maybe, it, right? Well, okay. Like, it could be really It does good. it efficiently. It does it. A pull from tomorrow becomes scary numbers of things. Yes. And I do like that the Locust God itself, you don't actually have to do anything else because you're going to be drawing cards every turn anyway. Mm-hmm. So at worst, you're going to get a token or two out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? At like, worst, it's going to trump get... every turn. Yeah, so. exactly. So yeah. I like really that. Really, if you count It's just, count. it hasn't been played yet. <laughs> like, yeah, we don't. No. commander it has i guess a little yeah we just but i don't i've heard it's not done well in commander really yeah that would surprise me it would surprise me um, too i haven't kept up so i might be off base with i that. just i i don't know if it's got the support in standard right yeah that's my thing that's kind of maybe you too. could build a deck around the locust god but that's a stretch it is kind of a stretch i think but i think that's the best option for it though. i mean to me i think it fits in a control deck um but like not really right like the only way it really does is to generate those tokens right my question is what do you take out for it well yeah like would you rather have on your bomb end would you rather have something like a glory bringer or would you rather have the locust god i'd probably rather have glory bringer i think i'd rather have glory bringer i mean maybe two and two three and one no i don't think so 
Uh, I mean, maybe we're off base. I don't. Maybe I don't we just know. need to test it and try. Maybe so. Maybe we need to see. Um. All right. First place with eight votes. What do you think it is? Give me a format. Uh, it's really big in commander. Um, I assume is it Prosh? I don't really play commander. No, but Prosh was on the list. He only got one vote though. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I like Prosh. Well, that doesn't make sense. Prosh does it really well. Go look up Prosh. Prosh is a great commander. Yeah, um, Prosh is a great commander. Hmm, big in commander. I don't know. Give it to me. Give it to me. Krinko. Oh, mob boss. Mob yeah. boss. Yeah. yeah. Duh. Make a token for every goblin. I mean, come on. Like, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, I get it. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> with eight votes, Krinko took first. I like that. Yeah. Um, some other notable cards that I really liked. Uh, Omnath, Locus of Rage, got three votes. Very close to the top three. Uh, didn't My man. Um, Avenger of Zendikar of is a cool one. Uh, uh, yeah. Good in cube. Like uh, not really. I mean, it doesn't get really played anywhere else, but it is Commander. a commander sure um i actually think it's a little underpowered in commander versus cube but that's just personal opinion well each cube is a microcosm though so. yeah yeah um elspeth sun's champion uh which i really oh, like i have a deep-seated hatred for sun's champion why she ran around theros and ruined it yeah me. it was awesome she was great Boo. anyway she got two votes um let's see what else did i want monastery mentor got a vote uh, I'm happy about that, although I That's wish it metal. had done better. Um, Drake Haven <laughs> got a vote. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Lingering Souls Ooh. also got a vote, which I think is a classic. Hey, I think that's pretty that, cool. I think right? that's great. Whoever said that, I don't have the name written down, but you're awesome. You're the, you get, I don't want to say the man I because say, yep. I don't know for sure. Um, Squirrel's Nest. Ah! Thank you, Squirrel's Nest. Well, Parks finally commented on something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was him. Um, <laughs> Thrag Tusk was suggested uh, by Alex. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I love Alex, Thrag Tusk. I love you, dude, but... You don't use them to make tokens, right? Well, you sort of do, but not really. Like, it's sort of just Here's a Here's the thing. You have no strategy with Thrag Tusk. Thrag Tusk no, just is. Okay, hold on. No, no. You blink Thrag Tusk. You can. That's what you do. But you didn't do that in, like, well, I guess... You, you did it in with, standard. Yeah, because you had resto. That's and what you did. Flicker with. Look. It was a blink deck. That's what you do with Thragtusk. That's how you get the token. No, I buy that. Thrag Thragtusk is just value all the time. Well, yeah. He doesn't have to do anything else rather than hit the board, gain you five life, and represent a giant fatty. <laughs> and then a that when he fatty. dies, you get another fatty, like a smaller. Not fatty. even dies. Well, okay. When he leaves the, the room field. and comes back in the room. <laughs> the last one I want to mention, uh, as there were plenty of others, but one that I did want to mention is Grave Titan. Um, oh, I really like Grave Good Titan. Job. I thought that was a cool include. Um, again, the Titans are sweet. I I don't rightfully so it wasn't in the top three. Mm -hmm. I love Grave Titan, but I don't think it's top three of the token yeah, generators. Um, right. But it is a very good one uh, and one that it's especially fun. in cube takes over. Are there any Titans that don't feel good playing with? Um, well, Prime Time's the all. best, I think. Um, it's the most viable in multiple formats, and it also just feels Probably. great. This is yeah. one instance where I think the blue one is the worst. Um, yeah, probably. I think it is. Um, it's between the blue and the red for me, I as far as worst. Red does red is a flick though, man. Well, red. I mean, red is both on a stick. Yeah, red's on a good. big stick. <laughs> red's very good, and it is actually played in I think land destruction in modern yeah, right now. Dude, it's great. Um, which is cool. I like it. I do like it a lot, but. Uh, and Frost Titan's not played anywhere, but I mean, in Cube, it's okay, but yeah. I'd, it's just okay. I'd probably say right. it's the worst. Um, Sun Titan is really only good because combos. <laughs> yeah, that's it, um, honestly. You can combo so easily with Sun Titan that it's You insane. can do a lot of mean things with um, Sun Titan. Yeah, I actually really didn't like Sun Titan when huh. I first saw it. I remember when the Titans were like first uh release and i was mm. like oh i don't really like sun titan it seems terrible and then i also didn't know how to play well um, so not much has changed yeah yeah right. it's about the same now but i respect the titan you know i got it um yeah, yeah. he's like your stepdad <laughs> 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 he doesn't have a stepdad i'm just saying <laughs> that was really funny um yes <laughs> like that like the stepdad i never had um i do think grave titan's probably in second 
yeah, for me just on sheer power level because it's just insane but primeval titans first for me just okay okay I, he yeah. is a deck or he was a deck summer bloom he is a deck <laughs> hashtag awesome um <laughs> get out of here with that weakness <laughs> take that to the door all right all right all right moving off of the question of the week uh okay. we do post these every monday so keep yeah. track of our instagram facebook uh twitter all mm-hmm. of that junk and thank you thank you for participating yeah guys voice in your get opinion a lot of responses on that actually. it's very cool i like it a lot um you like it a we, lot yeah i really like it a lot, we all like so, it a lot. i'm gonna tangent for a second do it cat you like it a lot <laughs> Um, we talked, uh, probably a month ago, maybe, maybe even longer than that about how we were restructuring the channel a little bit, hopefully making it more community focused. That was great. Um, and honestly, you guys have responded incredibly well. Yeah. Um, we've, we've done these questions of the week. We've also done the community deck tech, um, along with some giveaways and things like that. And you guys have like been super insanely Mm -hmm. awesome um we've gotten so many responses on the question of the week every week uh deck text we get a lot of responses this is super distracting um keep talking uh and of course the giveaway uh that we just finished yesterday was a huge success thanks to you guys uh we i believe almost touched 100 entries we got over 90 sweet for sure so um yeah it's really great and i really appreciate it will doesn't because he's just doing stupid stuff Kevin's trying to make you feel sorry for him. What? <laughs> I, I want it to be a recurring thing, so I'm going to do it every time you get emotional. All right. Well, that's done. That's never happening again. <laughs> um, all right, people. Here's the deal. We got our packs today. Sponsored by Grand Slam. Some pretty swell folks. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, what are you doing with your life? Yeah. That's all I'm going to say about it. No, guys, you really should check out Grand Slam Please. Comics and Collectibles in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, they've helped us out a ton, including something that we're going to spoil after the Cracker Pack. Ooh, I'm so excited! Um, so stay tuned for that. But they also do sponsor the Cracker Pack. They also sponsor a few episodes here and there uh, by providing cards for us. Yes. And, uh, they've and done those things, are always fun. Yeah, fun they, they sponsored things like the Unhinged episode, which we got to do because of them. Uh, otherwise, yeah. I don't think we would have. Uh, they also sponsored some of our first look into ours as well as Amonkhet and things like that. Um, and I think I don't, we haven't really discussed this, but I do like the format of us sort of splitting a box and doing a sealed thing when new formats come out. They're fun. They're um, fun. Um, I like that we get sort of a first look just, you know, between us. and Sure. And we do see a lot of the guards that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we do have our... Uh, what? It's a desert. Oh. <laughs> uh, I hate the deserts. Why? They're not that bad. Um, they're not. Uh, so, as always, we have our goal cards. Mine is, I'm going to try and say it right, Ramunap Excavator. Yes, you did Ha-ha, it. Crucible of Worlds. You did it. <laughs> you did it. Um, what is yours, my friend? Uh, Wildfire Eternal. I think he's going to be dope. Yeah. Seems pretty good. Dude, the deserts are gross. Did you get yours? No, I sure okay, didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I got didn't leave either. to chance. Oh. Return any number of target permanents you own to your hand. Okay, but that's not bad. I mean, yeah. Chance. Discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. Hmm. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. What'd you get? Um, So I got Apocalypse Demon. Hmm. I don't really like Apocalypse Demon. Apocalypse, Apocalypse Demon. I actually don't even like it in Limited that much. Do you not really? No, because you have Let to stack see. creatures. I don't actually know if I remember what he does. Um, oh, that's right. Like, yeah, he needs a lot of help getting turned on. Yeah, and... <laughs> you know what I mean. It's magic terms, Kev. Stay with me, buddy. <laughs> Stay... <laughs> Focus! He needs a little blue... No. Um... Stop. <laughs> um, fa- yeah. We have a family-friendly tag on the podcast. Don't do. ruin that for I'm us. I'm sorry. Um... So I actually don't like that as my first pick. I, um, I, I don't. I'm with you there. I'm I did get it. a sifter worm, which I really like. Uh, seven oh, seven yeah. four seven uh, with trample, and when it enters the battlefield, scry three, then reveal the top card of your library. You gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a great bomb. I also got unquenchable thirst, uh, Kenra scrapper, uh, rampaging hippo, which is just a solid body. Um, Survivor's Encampment, I've actually, as a land, have been impressed with, just because it helps you fix your mana a little bit. Not first yeah. pick, not first pick at all. 
Um, Vile Manifestation is also just a really good cycling uh, combat trick. Sure. So if you're in that cycling deck. I, I mean, Sifter Worm is kind of clearly the pick for me. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, I also got Unraveling Mummy. Oh, I like good that. good build around. Yeah. And no, the deserts aren't that bad, but... I They're b- kind of... Here's the thing. There is... I feel like there's always going to be a card I want more than a desert at any point. Not always. Honestly, though? Like, I don't think so. I mean, later in the pack, if you see a desert, know. I... If it's in your color and there's just not really much else, I'd take a desert. Because I'm not... All right. Ceridon. Mm-hmm. I'm not picking this unless I want a desert sort of thing. And maybe I just need to try drafting a desert deck. Well, so here's my thing with the deserts. Um, like, the creatures that benefit from them, it's a great benefit, and you definitely want to be able to enable it. But it's also more of a bonus. So, like, you only need, like, two or three deserts in your deck to really get there with them. Do you, though? I, I think. I'm not sure about that. Because um, you're going to see a lot of your I deck like in a limited got, environment I like anyway. that they've got cycling. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I that, think that's great. And most of them say mm. desert uh, in your graveyard or on a field, mm-hmm. which I like. Um, I like them. I mean, they're not great. I, I buy that. Yeah, but I just mean yeah. I like them in a limited format. Yeah. I don't, they're not fun. Okay. Um, <laughs> I honestly don't know with this pack what I'd pick. I do have a foil ruin rat. <laughs> There's Pick not... the rat every time. It is kind of really good, though. I mean, the rats um, are pretty good. I think I'd... I might actually take the mummy. I might take on rat. I like the mummy. The mummy. Um, the mummy leaves me open to two strong colors in this set. Mm-hmm. Um, with other removal. Torment of Venom is also strong in here. It's not going to wheel, but... No, not at all. I like but it. I like you do it get, too. in drafts, you do get an Amon Ket pack, if I'm not mistaken, which means Correct. the black-white zombies theme is dual. Uh, if you get a binding mummy or something long. like that. Uh, and your Amon Ket pack, you you did it. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. You also get the Eternal Eyes and Embalm stuff uh, back, and they count, so that's important. Things to note. Things to know. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Guys, uh, I think that's that's all we had. Hmm. What you got there? Oh! Uh my dragon box oh dude i've got one too what weird what how what well actually i don't the grand slam does guys what does that mean just just pay attention to to wednesday uh the 26th it smells like for no particular reason it smells like free stuff does right? it not that's what i thought i, I got, think this is free i got a hint of free Something. i don't know we'll find out Small community interaction required. Oh. Huh. Cool. What could that mean? Yeah, I guess we'll find out on uh, the 26th, guys. But uh, until then, we hope you have a fantastic day and a great weekend as yeah. it is Friday. Thanks for sticking through this disjointed this episode. Is a, this is this bad one. conglomeration <laughs> of... This uh, is good. Everything before it. <laughs> of, intri- of, of intrigue and disappointment. Yes. All, All the things stuff. you can count on with an it resolve <laughs> cast. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to get out of here. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us and listening to the podcast, watching the podcast, whatever you. you're doing. Uh, but we do appreciate it. But with that, we're going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves.